Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you game 3 in a best of 3 between Eugen and Gonzo in round 2 of Chicken Jews European Tournament. So this is really set to be a spectacular game. Both players taken one game from each other. Gonzo in game 1 took the game with the 116th Windhund versus Eugen's first Panzerna. In the second game, we saw Eugen come back with his 2nd Infantry versus Gonzo's 9th Panzer. And now we're going to be seeing Carpique Duelists with the 2nd Armoured French versus the Panzerlaire, which is another very interesting matchup. So, one thing that's very, very cool is that both players have played different divisions in every game so far. And that surely just tells us that there are a lot of interesting and viable divisions in the game at the moment, which is really exciting. But let's focus on this matchup. We have the second armoured, which are a pretty strong phase A and phase B sort of division. And then we have the Panzerlaire, which are renowned for being weaker in phase A and especially B, and then really strong in phase C, in terms of their income at least. Gonzo has shown us though that you can be aggressive with the Panzerlaire in phase A in the past and he loves to use those pumas aggressively and make a lot of ground with them early on. But it looks like on the side of Eugen we are going to be seeing some units come down and those include a M10 at the start and well two M10s coming out of the side of Eugen. These are going to be incredibly difficult for the Panzerlaire to deal with in phase A because Panzerlaire they have 1000 meter range AT, they have pumas, and nothing really much else that can challenge a 1,200 meter range tank in phase A. So Gonzo could be in trouble here in the early phases. That's not to say he will just get rolled over because as he goes into phase B and phase C, he will be able to sort of, if he holds the line enough, come back pretty strong in the late game and maybe take the game from Eugen. So we'll have to wait and see what how it turns out. But these M10s definitely give Eugen a lot of control on this airfield early on. And it's a very nice sort of pick for the deck or the division for this map. I actually really, really like the uh, French on this map. So we have uh, some Spay here. And then we have the Command Infantry and some Voltages, I guess. And then we've got the M8 RBFM, which is yeah just a, a Greyhound there. Further down, M10, Spay for the airfield. Then we got uh, more spay with more infantry for the bottom side. Over on the side of Gonzo, it's going to be going for the Storch play. Bringing out his recon aircraft once again. And honestly, there could be a chance that uh, Eugen kind of expects this and purchases a Spitfire. But we have seen that he's taken out two M10s, so it's doubtful that a Spitfire will show up early on. However, you don't really want to leave this Storch hanging about as... Gonzo has shown his prowess with take, taking advantage of the information that recon aircraft can provide. On the other side of things, a Spitfire is pretty much twice the cost of a Storch, so you've got to make that sacrifice if you want to, to get rid of the information for Gonzo. So we've got on the side of Gonzo a Puma 258, Command Infantry and AT gun with some Panzergrams on the bottom side. AT gun and machine gun on the top side with a pack 38 in the mid. So Gonzo doesn't really have too many forces to work with and he's got to be very careful that he doesn't let his forces get overrun early on. Now here on this bottom side this Storch isn't actually going to work particularly well because the Storch is fantastic when your opponent uses AT guns but when you're opponent uses a 1200 meter range tank destroyer there isn't really much you're going to be able to do about that however Eugen can't really afford to let the pack 38 get into the 1000 meter range otherwise this pack 38 will have a chance of penetration onto the m10 and that could be pretty devastating early on for Eugen and open up this bottom side of the map where there is no other AT and thus the 258 and Puma would push very aggressively. We do see a Jeep arriving with a mortar for the bottom side. There's also a mortar for this top side. It looks like uh, Eugen 
has spotted this pack 38 and would like to remove that. You would also like to get rid of the pack 38 on the bottom side. And these are only 60 millimeter mortars, so 900 meter range. Nothing spectacular there. Currently the M10 is getting shot onto the pack 38. It's probably going to take five shots to actually get the kill there. As in one health loss from the pack 38 with every shot. But that's assuming that Gonzo doesn't fall it back like he has just done. But moving it back in, will it find 1,000 meter range again? I don't think it will. I think this M10's going to be fine for now. But the voltages here definitely not having a fun time against the Panzergrenz 258 and Puma. On this top side, the M10's engaging the Pac 38 and MG42. 81mm mortar has pinned down the Pac 38. Gonzo's brought up a, another one there to make things difficult for Eugene to push early on. So far, this Pac 38 on the bottom side down to one health. Looks like Gonzo's going to keep trying to move that back into the 1,000 meter range. But every time that goes into the tree line there, I'm pretty sure he reveals that to Eugene because of these spy. So Eugene could very easily take care of that now. now. It seems as though Eugene may be trying to use the 50 cal to get rid of the Storch here. But it's probably more likely to be trying to get into line of sight of either 258 or the Puma. Now what would be nice is if this command infantry was unloaded so that this M10 was actually one star veteran because then it would be a little bit more accurate and probably hit the mark just that little bit more. All the Pumas popped out there. Going to be going for the shot onto the M10. Looks like Eugen's heavily going to have to micro on that bottom side. On this top side, pack 38 get, got pinned down, got forced back. This, this pack 38 looks like it took a beating, but not too much occurring up here. Half track, gone to the centre really, to help gain some territory early on. And it is a plus one in favour of Gonzo early in the game. And with this aggression on the bottom side, it's not going to change any time soon. 52% territory is very nice, and getting a lead in phase A for the Panzerlair is something that... Uh, is perfect for them going forwards in this game. So the Puma here is going to be engaging the M10. It's got plenty of time on target to hit the mark. M10 is going to be firing back. Looks like the M8 there took a hit from the Pack 38. There is a M3A3 arriving up on that top side. There's also one arriving on the bottom side though. And those are going to be accompanying the M10s and hopefully giving them some veterancy. M10s going to just be reversing away from this Puma. Internal fire on the M3A1 as it does get hit by the Pack 38s here. Now fortunately that mortar is doing work there. It's got an 81mm mortar on this top side. That's 1200m range. So he's got the range to take care of these Pack 38s and is looking for the kill on to both of those. That would be very nice indeed. But he's got to be careful that both of these Pack 38s are on one health. That's when they do the most damage. It's not actually a thing in the game, by the way. But it always seems to happen. When a AT gun gets down to low health, they always just seem to bounce back and kill loads of units. And it's really, really irritating to play against. But there we go. M3A3 and M10 playing with the uh, Puma here. Puma is going to be able to get some shots onto the half track and the M8. Gonzo's got to be careful not to get this Puma killed, though. Because it seems as though he's going to kind of gets around it here. Ideally what you could do is sort of reverse keeping the tree line or tree patch here in between himself and the M10 and the M3A3 and then sort of drive behind this tree line down here. Then he could enforce an engagement at uh, closer range. Pack 38 is going to be engaging the M3A3. Puma is still engaging the M8 down here. This is not a very good engagement at all. Panzerwerfer has managed to pin down the M10 there. M8 goes down. Puma is in line of sight of the M3A3 as well as the Pack 38 there. I think Gonzo might go for a kill here or two. He can definitely sneak out now with the Panzerwerfer pinning down the M10. 
That's put this Puma in a really good position to get a couple kills. Takes out the M3A3. Is he going to take out the M10 as well? He's not currently in range, but he could definitely try and go for the rush down there, I believe. And Ben's going to open up onto these Vultures. They don't know what hit them when two MG42s come out of that bush. Puma on the top side. Still doing work as well. That's going to be engaging the 81mm mortar by the looks of things. So just this play from Gonzo has been really, really awesome so far. Puma here is just going very aggressive now, but the M10 has recovered, so he does have to be careful. Fortunately, he's covered by these these bunkers at the moment. But this Puma, if it if this M10 comes to one side, could get hit pretty hard there. AT gun is arriving on this bottom side as well. MG42 on the top side, going to be pinning down the voltages there. And honestly, Gonzo is just making it incredibly difficult for Eugen to find ground this early into the game. And where the French are a very aggressive phase A and B division, they need to make the, their ground in, that, in those phases. Because if it gets to phase C, Gonzo is just going to be overwhelming him with armor that he can't really deal with. Because these M10s basically have the highest AP that the French gain access to throughout the game. The M4A3 76mm they get are exactly the same. So we're in the centre here, we have a 60mm mortar, still trying to go for the shots onto these Pack 38s. Thorch is coming back in. Looks like that Pack 38 is going to take quite a bit of damage actually from that mortar fire. A nice direct hit there, did another health point of damage. See if the last shot can kill it off. That would be very nice. Nope, just going to be left there on one health. Now both of the one health pack 38s on the top side did go down. But it seems as though Gonzo has quite a lot of those available. So he's brought in another one for the top side. The one in the mid still alive. And this one on the bottom side surviving with one health once again for the time being. Now the important thing here is that Eugen still has this M10 alive. And as long as he doesn't lose both of these M10s, he still has a lot of presence on the field early in the game. Losing that command infantry there though to the 258, that is not a good move. 60mm mortar does manage to take out the pack 38 there. And these Spahi are in a perfect position for giving recon information to Eugen throughout the game. You just got to hope that this 251 half track doesn't reverse into them by accident. But yeah, recon placement just in general from Eugene at the moment is fantastic. He can see pretty much everything that's going on. At least the important units. He can see where the Puma is. He can see where the Pack 38s are. Puma on the bottom side. And that's all he needs to know in order to play around this. Now it's good that these M10s are starting to make some presence on the airfield. This is really where these M10s can shine because they can take full advantage of their 1,200 meter range without Gonzo having too much to play around that. So focusing on the top and bottom side for Eugen probably wasn't the best approach early on but now he's focusing on this airfield push. It could work out very nicely indeed. M10 going to be hitting this uh, half track here in the mid and if he gets a kill onto this half track that would open up a huge salient in the center of the map 51 percent territory lead has now been found in favor of eugen so he's going to be starting to get himself some points on the board m10 here is going to be in range of the 258 gets the driver wounded with the first shot panzerwerf comes down with the second volley of missiles now, since this m10 is open top can get killed by one of these rockets direct hitting it so it does have to be careful doesn't actually end up with the m10 pinned down which could be bad news for this puma although the puma has managed to get into the 1000 meter range gets a weapon jam onto the m10 these pans are going to if they moved an inch forwards would give that three star veterancy and that would be a very accurate puma able to shoot at this m10 and possibly find the kill there that would be very important indeed now we have moved into phase b so befell tiger already on the field and that's going to be rolling towards the mid to accompany this puma in its push really nice smoke there from eugen just blocking off the shots 
from the Puma, but this Puma is relentless. Just going to be driving on through. Ideally, that smoke wants to be covering the retreat of the M10, putting the smoke like near the M10 instead, and it looks like Eugen identified that since the Puma went aggressive, but the Puma does find the kill, and the 258 is going to be killing off this 81mm mortar as well. That's a couple of big kills there. Definitely carves up Eugen's push in the mid. Take out the half track there. They've cut off three units of infantry. The Nueve, the Spay, and another Nueve there. So things about to fall drastically in favour of Gonzo. Eugen has quite a concentration of forces on this top side. He's got an M4A2. He's got his M10 there still. So he might be able to make some serious ground up here. That M4A2, the two star variant, can do a lot of damage. Well, it looks like the Pack 38 tried to go for a cheeky shot there onto the M4A2 but was not successful. M10 and M4A3 engaging the Puma now. Oh, nice kill there from the 105mm M4A3. Takes out the Puma. That is a good kill indeed. So M4A2 just going to quickly finish off that pack 38. That's going to open things up on this top side. So although there was a massive loss of ground for Eugen in the centre and bot side, Things are still nearly 50-50. We've got the plus one now for you, uh, for Gonzo again though. As he's ticking up to 400 points. And we have phase C in like 6 minutes. And when we get to phase C. It'd be interesting to see how Yudin decides to try and deal with that. 2 star pack 40 though. Going to one shot the M10. That is a very nice kill indeed. Puts a lot of threat on this top side. One thing that is lacking from Gonzo is because he relies so heavily on this Storch, he doesn't have much recon availability. And we see with the Puma going down there, there is quite simply no recon on this top side. Spitfire Mark 9 comes in with a 15 HE power bombs. Bombs out the pack 40. Very, very nice play there from Eugen. He could probably also use that Spitfire to shoot down the Storch. I'm surprised he hasn't decided to do so. Either way, M4A2 going to be engaging this half track. And if he finds the kill onto that, then that will gain him even more ground on this top side. Nueve and Spey, still in this position, are going to be spotted out by the half-track here. Half-track nearly took, takes a grenade, but uh, with the half-track shooting that squad and the Panzergrens unloading, they're not going to last very long, that's for sure. So 55% territory lead here for Eugen now. With this push coming through on this top side. Spy have been found and killed by the 258. Panzergren's going to be engaging, engaging the voltages here. And once those voltages go down, well, Gonzo's probably going to be leveling things out down here. So this is an incredibly interesting game at the moment. Befell Panther going to get very aggressive on this top side, I would expect, with the help of the Befell Tiger on the airfield. Can probably clean up this push quite nicely. But what I'd like to see from Gonzo is a focus on this bot side. And try and sort of take as much ground as he can down here whilst he can. Because when he gets into phase C, he could definitely like reinforce these hangars, for example. If he manages to get some infantry into there now. So the map's been basically turned on its side. We've got 50-50 across the board. And look at this territory. It's so dodgy at the moment. Both players really being pressured on each side of the map. Well, Panther straight in the face of this M5A1. That is definitely a goner. Really nice kill there from the Befell Panther. Gets rid of that 50 cal support for any infantry. Or oh, M4A2 is engaging the Tiger at close range. The Tiger hasn't even got a shot off yet. The Tiger misses as well with the morale damage there. With the Trax Wheels damage, she's not going to be retreating very fast. This M4A2 has a chance to get the kill. This Panzergren is going to get absolutely demolished in the open. We even see the M4A3 getting involved with a 105. And that M4A2 can now charge down this Befell Tiger and get the kill. This would leave Gonzo in complete disarray. As the center, which was potentially so strong with that Tiger there, just got taken apart by this M4A2. 
and this Befell Panther can't really do anything about it. Might be able to get onto line of sight briefly, but um, this M4A2 can just be covered by the hangar and it won't be an issue. The M4A2 going to get the aim on once again. M4A2 just aims so much more quicker. Oh, but never mind. The Befell Tiger was facing the right way. Gets the bailout onto the M4A2. Very, very nice indeed. M10, though, coming in for the cheeky side shot. Does not find the hit. M10 now under pressure. Has to start making that full back. Gets the kill. That was the 900 meter range engagement. Has 16 AP versus the 12 armor of the Tiger. With that shot landing, finds the kill. Very nice there by Eugen. Oh, wow. This is intense, that's for sure. M4A2 is not in a very good position, though. This Befell Panther could definitely come and clean that up quickly before the M10 arrives. One issue with the French infantry, actually, uh, which is being shown off here, is that they don't have any AT. So this Befell Panther can actually be very aggressive towards these buildings and not have to worry too much. The only AT that Eugen has is these voltages. But with the 61% territory lead at the moment... Well, that's a plus two for Eugen, and he's certainly counting up the score very quickly. M4A3 is going to be engaging the Befell Panther. The Befell Panther did clean up the Sherman there, but double Spitfire. Going to be bombing out the Befell Panther, and now this M10 can get very aggressive. Try and find the kill at close range. These Spitfires cleaned up that Storch. Good stuff indeed. Looks like Eugen's just going to ignore these Panzergrens on the bottom side, continue pushing on with his... M4A2 towards his Panzergrenfuhrer. Panzergrenfuhrer won't last very long under the fire of both the 30 cal, 50 cals, and the 5 HE from the main gun there. Going to be smoking themselves off. Spitfire is going to be strafing the Panzergrens here as they come in. Actually, pretty smart from Gonzo to bring in the Panzergrens to this position as it stops the M10 moving forwards. But it looks like. This panther got surrendered by the Nueve. Incredible. I did not expect that to happen. But I guess it must have backed towards them and then got itself surrendered. So both the tiger and the panther are gone now. Two tanks that you would have thought would allow Gonzo to come back in this game have just disappeared. They've just gone. Really, really nice use of the Sherman at close range to take on the Tiger, which then coincidentally allowed the M10 to get the kill. And here using the double Spitfire bombers to force back the Befell Panther into his infantry squad, which was really well placed, worked out very well indeed. Half-track there is going to get surrendered as well by the Voltages. And we've only just come into Phase C. So if you think Gonzo with his Panzerlaire had 95 points per minute, which is one of I think the least amount of any division in the game to buy both a Befell Panther and a Befell Tiger and lost them both. That must have been absolutely devastating for Gonzo. And you can see the result of that. He's lost his positioning all over the map. 67% territory lead in favour of Eugen. Now we have come into phase C, 150 points per minute for Gonzo. He's really going to have to find himself some significant kills though take out the m10s take out this m4a2 on the bottom side then he can try and make back some ground but he's got to do it quickly otherwise eugen's going to have such a lead that he can't come back in the game and gonzo here going to be going for the Königs tiger play i'm not entirely convinced this is the right move because we've seen the double spitfire come out of eugen and a Königsteiger, I feel like, could just be forced to fall back and then be surrendered. Especially when you have quite a lot of half-tracks available on the side of Eugen. You've got reasonably fast tanks. I reckon this Königsteiger could be in trouble. We can see the Focke-Wolf 190A8 being brought in. Maybe that's going to be a counter to those Spitfire Bombers to prevent the Königsteiger from being pinned. And the Nuivir here are getting pretty close to this half track would be good for them to actually get in cover there so that they can destroy that safely but it doesn't look like it's going to matter m4a2 comes and takes out a 
pretty much full supply of a blitz there, which is going to stop this Panzerwerfer from reloading. Another 50 point kill there for Eugen, and he's going to continue to make ground. This is a very impressive and dominating display in this game three from Eugen. It's all up to the King Tiger. Can it do the job it needs to? Needs to find the armor kills, and then he can come in with his Panzergrand reinforcements or even Pioneer reinforcements and clean up a lot of this infantry. So that's what Gonzo has to do. As long as this King Tiger is still alive, Gonzo has a chance. But that King Tiger is going to be focused by so many things right now. The way over here are going to likely get taken out by the Panzergrands in cover. Yeah, MG42 does the job. Nueve and uh, Voltage is trying to make a push on the top side but not being successful just yet. Two units of infantry are coming down to the bottom side, maybe to try and re-secure re these hangars. But, wow, the M10 there, first shot gets the crew knockout onto Gonzo's King Tiger. Well, this could be devastating. Never mind, King Tiger comes back online, one bangs the M10. Very nice kill indeed. I thought that that Koenigstagger could have been in trouble there, but this M10 could not find line of sight quick enough. Oh, King Tiger definitely creeping forwards. Double Spitfire's coming in. The Focke Wolf, where is it? Yep, there we go. King Tiger, one run, forced to fall back. No Focke Wolf in sight to kill off these Spitfires. And that King Tiger is now under threat. Fortunately, not in direct line of sight of any tanks. I say that just as the King Tiger sneaks a line of sight between those bunkers and gets the kill onto the M10 as it's aiming at the Panzergrands. This King Tiger is definitely picking up kills, slowly but surely. Now we see an 88 arriving on this bottom side. That's going to be pretty difficult for this M4A2 to take care of if it cannot pin it down sooner than later. SDKFZ going to be engaging the Voltages. Oh, well, saying that, the Flak 41 takes a shot to the face and is going to be dealt with rather shortly. Hansgrens did manage to get quite far up and unloaded here, but now the front line's fallen away from Gonzo once again, and we have the plus three still on the board for Eugen. So slowly but surely, well, not even slowly anymore, but surely counting up his points towards victory. M4A2 at close range is going to be engaging the Koenigstiger. Koenigstiger shrugs that off, aims its gun. Oh, didn't quite get the shot off in time. But it's going to continue forwards very aggressively towards Eugen. I'm pretty sure Gonzo knows he can't really hang about. So he is being very aggressive with his heavy armour at the moment. Realises that he can, if he has his front armour facing, win at close range. But this is very risky, allowing the M4A2 this close. Hands of Earth are going to be coming in with the last of its rockets. Try and get a bit of morale damage there. Push the engagement in favour of the Koenigstiger. The Koenigstiger slowly but surely swinging its turret around. Does not find line of sight just yet. You can see Gonzo is microing that quite a lot. Can he get the kill? This is going to be the engagement right here. Look at this M4A2 just trying to dodge around the Koenigstag. Koenigstag is going to reverse away from that. Oh, this is just so tense. I want to see if this M4A2 can get the kill here. Oh, the King Tiger. It stopped aiming. It stopped aiming. Eugen had his chance. Koenigstiger now aiming back again. He's going to get the shot off. Transmission damage onto the M4A2. Gets the full back. That M4A2 is a goner. As it's now stuck behind enemy lines. But DB73 coming in with the bombs is going to not force the Koenigstiger to fall back. So the Koenigstiger is going to be easily able to mop up the M4A2. And that was a tense engagement, that's for sure. So... He surrenders that, and now in comes more infantry to try and deal with Eugen's infantry, and this is where 
Gonzo really has a chance of making back some ground. He's taken out the two M10s that I was talking about. He took out the M4A2. All of that important armor that I said he needed to kill. He's managed to do it. And this could swing things back completely in his favor in this late game. In this top side, the Panther A is very threatening against M4A3. M4A3 is going to have to get extremely lucky to get a kill onto a Panther A. And we have more infantry coming in on this top side as well. And there's just no armor left for Eugen to support his forces. He is, thankfully, 2,000 points ahead. Use that phase B power to really like break through the armored units that Gonzo had. Some really spectacular play with the Spitfire Bombers there to take care of the Panther on the top side and the M4A2 at close range to take care of the Panther or the Tiger, sorry. But um, this is a pretty insane at this point. Voltages really holding on for as long as they can. Take out a half track in the process. This half track's just going to carry on through. Eventually going to be bumping into the sappers. I reckon Eugen's hoping he'll find the Zooka shot there with the sappers, but I mean, unlikely to happen at this point because that half track's going to be very likely to reveal that sappers if they decide to fire, which they will likely do since they're not on return fire. Never mind. Didn't actually fire in the end. Panther A there. Going to get bombed out. By the double Spitfire. Voltage is going to be running across the open. To try and do the job up there. With their bazooka. Surrounding this Panther A is very important indeed though. But as you can see the pioneers have been unloaded. This M4A3 could honestly just fast move up here. And keep that Panther A pinned down. I think that would be the best move there, just aggressively move the M4A3. Now these sappers, as they were surrounded, revealed that they were there. But it looks like Gonzo is just going to kind of ignore that for now and allow these pioneers to discover them. Now we do see the pioneers and the half track has been taken care of. And now the Panther A is in trouble, but two Befell Panzer IVs on the way. They're going to be saving the day for this Panther A for sure. Look how far these half tracks are getting. This is ridiculous. If these half tracks can get into these hangars, it just gives back so much ground to Gonzo. This comeback is actually insane right now. So sappers were revealed by these pioneers and as the rest of this infantry continues forwards, those are going to be taken out and now the Koenigsteiger can carry on and try and help deal with the M10. So the pioneers did manage to get into the building there. Um, they did get uh, pinned down in the process, so are going to be left behind enemy lines. On the top side, M4A3 got to track wheel damage. And now it's just a matter of time until the Panther A and the Befell Panzer IVs get the kill. Look at that. Point blank. Now, oh, the Panther A got the kill. I thought the Befell Panzer IVs would do it, but they didn't. Either way. Two SBW-2341s coming in to accompany these tanks and try and break down some more of Eugen's infantry in these buildings. But actually, Eugen does have a pretty strong hold here with this infantry. It's going to be hard to dislodge the sappers and also these voltages could find a kill onto one of these Befell Panzer IVs. But you can see just how the income can really affect the game. Like in this later phase, the Panzer Ledge come on so strong. Internal fragments by the Voltages with their first Zooka. Let's see if the second one can do the job as well. He needs to hit the second one. Oh, he hit the first one again. That was a mistake in my opinion. Eugen really needed to target the second Befell Panzer. Okay, he gets the internal fire and the surrender. So both of the Befell Panzer IVs dealt with by the Voltages there, but they have run out of ammunition. So they can't deal with the Panther A anymore. And that's just going to carry on through. You can see the SBW2341. One of them did get taken out. I'm not entirely sure what by. But we do see the half track go down there. Oh, unless it came around to this top side. I think that's probably what happened. So that's going to be cleaning up the voltages there. 
We do see half track coming in on the bottom side with more sappers. Eugene, 2,300 points. 50 50 on the board. Eight minutes left to go. Can Gonzo find himself basically 2,200 points in order to win? That is going to be the question. He would definitely need to go for like a plus five right now. Just clean sweep Eugene off the board. But I. I think it's very unlikely that Eugen's going to allow that to happen. He can quite simply reinforce these hangers, be it at a minus one for the rest of the game and still win. So we do see the Koenigsegg getting crew knocked out again by these M10s. <laughs> the M10 managing to find the crew knockout onto the Koenigsegg twice now, um, but not going to be able to find the kill. And what's interesting here is it seems as though Gonzo has just ignored all of the infantry in these hangars and has just surrounded them, which is a really, really smart play from Gonzo because he doesn't actually need to wipe these guys out if he can just take ground beyond them. So they're going to be completely surrounded. That pushes it to a plus two in favour of Gonzo. Still not enough to win or even cause a draw. Sapu is here. Do get the Zooka shot onto the 2341 recon. Buckwolf 190 does find the kill onto the DB. The French really taking a beating now. Those sappers, if they get spotted. Interesting. Gonzo is just going to go straight past. I guess he doesn't really have any time to mess about trying to find those sappers. He's just going to carry on and push for a plus three, which is still not enough to win. Focke Wolf 190 is going to be able to shoot down this Spitfire Mark 9 if it has enough time on target. Will the Spitfire Mark 9 get out in time? Yes, it will. Okay, so the Focke Wolf there is going to have to really get away from the spawn, otherwise it's going to be in trouble. But here we see the M4A376 mils coming in. They're both on return fire. Looks like they're going to be used to double team this Panther A, which is definitely something that uh, will succeed at close range. M10 in a bit of a pickle. Either has to be revealed by the Panther A or the King Tiger comes into line of sight of both at the same time. M10, how are you still alive? <laughs> oh shit, son. The King Tiger goes down to a side shot. From the M4A376 mil, Gonzo's hopes and dreams are dashed as even the M4A3 finds a kill onto the Panther A as well. Fantastic stuff. And Gonzo surrenders. I think I would too. That was two spectacular kills at the end there from Eugen. 34 minutes and 57 seconds it took for Eugen to solidify this game three and win himself a place in round three of Chicken Juice European Tournament. That was a spectacular end to a fantastic game. Eugene with the 2,995 kills to 3,100 losses. And I would say vice versa for Gonzo, but it looks like there was some friendly fire involved along the way. Okay, in terms of kills, well, early on this M4A2 certainly did work. That was the one that helped secure the kill onto the Tiger. We see this M4A3. Uh, did manage to help surrender the Befell Panther up here. Then we have this M4A2 also doing very well. It seems like these two-star tanks just went to work, but this hero, good old Henry, with the M4A376 mil, to taking out both a King Tiger and a Panther A. That is just insane at the end of that game. Just an absolutely awesome comeback from Gonzo, but just couldn't achieve enough ground quick enough. And by that point, Eugen had already made like 2,300 points. So it was a very hard task that you, that Gonzo had. And he was playing against the clock, which why he was being so aggressive with his tanks. But eventually, Eugen managed to save the points to get those M4A3s in. And they certainly did the job. Secured that game, which could have definitely fallen in favor of Gonzo if he'd made much more ground. I don't know, I think you probably would have needed the plus five, which basically means that you stop the spawning of all of the opponent's units. You basically control all of their spawns, which is really, really hard to do. So, yeah, I don't know, maybe it was already over as soon as 
Eugene went over 2,000 points. But there we go. Really, really awesome and fun game to watch. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next game, which will be another best of three. See you then, guys. Goodbye.